it's that special moment in a console generation cycle when the new emerging hardware starts to slide into view. The fever picks up, the hunger for new specs, throughputs and all the limitless possibilities it can offer makes our mouth water. Sony have been first to taste the menu with an exclusive interview with Wired, which you can check out in the description below. This is with lead engineer architect Mark Cerny, the very same of Crash Bandicoot, Sonic 2, Marble Madness, and of course his greatest achievement yet, Nag. Now his long and illustrious career put him in an excellent position to lead studios for classic games over the years. His low level and detailed knowledge of games, programming and how best to utilise hardware also placed him as an excellent patriarch for the PS4 platform. Which leads us nicely into this next PS5 console where he has the same task in helping focus the huge teams of R&D within Sony and AMD on the best ingredients to repeat the success of the now 5 plus year old predecessor. Now, I won't repeat old ground here, but what we now know to be true is almost exactly what I predicted a year ago, which you can check out in the link if you so wish. Here I will take the info from the wide interview and discuss what it is, what it means, and the missing info that is not yet known. What are the specs though? Well, we know the PS5 will have an 8-core, hyper-threaded, 16-thread that is, Ryzen 2 7 nanometer CPU, which again isn't a surprise, and the clocks are currently unknown. A Navi 7 nanometer GPU, again clock specs are unknown, and a solid state, likely PCIe 4 spec NVMe interface drive offering 3 gigabytes per second or more of bandwidth. That's pretty damn fast. In fact, that's faster than anything on the market, which is mentioned in the interview, but that really is a sizable leap over what we've got at the moment. Now the 3D audio is now also included that will offer bi-directional sound effects that work with existing speakers to enhance your ears enjoyment as much as your eyes. This will be a welcome boost and help push the superb audio work back into the gaming spotlight I am sure. Backwards compatibility with the PS4 is included as is the current PSVR headsets that like the Pro will further enhance the game's immersion it offers. These will likely include improvements to by default which has been hinted at with the Spider-Man tests used for the SSC tests but I will come to this later. The VR headset being compatible is also expected and intelligent as the extra horsepower and great features the headset had, such as the RGB screen, the 120Hz output, will allow early VR adopters to enjoy the extra without having to buy a new headset when released. That extra horsepower here will really help deliver and push that VR into the next level and I believe it might end up being one of the biggest leaps you'll see between this generation and the last. But we'll wait and see on that, but it certainly will be nice. And something like me, and I'm sure many of you watching my videos know, I'm well into VR, and I do see this as the future of many areas of gaming and immersion. It's also an area where I go back to the whole games of playing games quickly and for short stints, and just enjoying the fun of the game rather than getting wrapped up in everything else that goes alongside it. So that's another reason why I'm looking forward to how VR pay it pays out in the future. Now, the info regarding 8K also adds certainty that this box will support HDMI 2.1 with VRR tech in place and this will again start to hit more and more TVs around the launch of the console which is 2020 as I expected. So these specs don't tell us a great deal, they do not tell me anything I didn't really know before or didn't expect, but we do know the core, Zen 2, so we can all be happy now and move on because that's the most important thing isn't it? A huge leap in CPU means that everything will be great, it was the big stalemate and problem of our old current consoles and therefore everything will be absolutely amazing now. Obviously no, that's not the case. If you add more power to a system, then inevitably the programmers are just going to use that to do other things or be less efficient in what they're doing when they start. I'm not saying that in a bad way, I'm saying that's what will happen. So don't expect that just because we've moved to a Zen 2, that everything will be 60 hertz and running super smooth and there'll be no issues at all and everything will load and depack in lightning seconds. Just keep your expectations in check. This is still a desktop based CPU and you can check out my Zen coverage of the PC last year which I went into depth on how CPU testing should work, how it should work in the environment and doesn't largely in most of the PC space. How you test that, check that it works correctly and set your expectations. Like I say, 
possibly three gigahertz is something I'm expecting here. Maybe slightly lower, maybe slightly higher. I don't know. The thermodynamics of this machine are all unknown at this point. In fact, the physical footprint may not even be finalized yet. It probably isn't. So there's lots of areas that aren't really agreed as where they could go with their clock speeds. And these are the kind of tweaks and tw turns they could change very last minute in the process. Now, of course, all of this doesn't really tell us that much, if you think about it. It's a guarded release of information that will continue throughout the next few months, in part to keep the PS5 in mind when Microsoft inevitably announced its new player to the party at E3. Now, we know the ray tracing support for games is coming. I again stated this before, and the Gran Turismo demos with this and other info rumblings pointed to this being part of the package that AMD were pushing on. And obviously, it's best to get the community out there doing the work with you, and that enhances the results you get in the console and the hardware. Now, the extent of what the hardware enhancements bring to this or aid it are yet unknown. The 3D audio hardware may point us to a sharing or a similar method here to aid ray calculation and bundling with BVH or Octree hierarchy helping reduce the cost and the footprint but all the facts here point to expect something absolutely incredible looking once Sony teams open the floodgates to show us what they've been beavering away on so this will be exciting to see but what about the gaps in that information well the full specs as I say are not known but I still expect approximately 12 maybe slightly more teraflops of performance four times or greater CPU levels, 16 gigabytes levels of RAM with a possible four gigabyte operating system allocation to aid multitasking, cost reduction and performance, as this can be much cheaper and slower solutions such as LPDDR3 or such to run the OS. Now that drive for the storage basis and the delivery of method, the hard drive, will offer huge leaps in game design, size, loading speeds and performance on the whole alongside the memory allocation and bandwidth improvements. So expect this and the drive for 4 and 8K resolutions to be a large factor in the design choices of the console as a whole. Now I do suspect the 8K resolutions are more designed around the VR solution, the PSVR 2, which I'm sure will be a sizable leap over the current solution. And that will be 4K for pretty much every game on this console, which you could argue is a waste of that performance. But we are where we are with the Pro and the X. That's really not going to go backwards now to 1080p. We have much more to learn on this than we already know, that's for sure. But I think the signs look good that Sony are on the right path of where we expected it to be. And this will be a sizable leap over what we've seen before. But will it still play games then? Well, of course, it will. It uses discs, which is a welcome sound for me as a collector of games new and old, back when the old was new. PC is an obvious and clear win for us consumers on that score and I suspect the single disc or game that you buy will run on PS4, Pro and PS5 as required. Splitting these up into two SKUs makes little sense and I doubt this will happen. The improvements though may be a mixed affair with current PS4 Pro titles likely running better by default on the newer hardware. The abundance of dynamic resolutions will now max out 100% of the time with no code needing to be touched, as will frame rates, which will allow games such as God of War to run at a locked 1080 at all times right from day one, as will Sekiro and its unlocked 32x1800 resolution at 60fps, now hitting 60fps with ease. Of course, the list of games that this covers is vast, and I've covered many of these on my channel, and you can see these if you want to, but this is the base standard you can expect, at launch at least. But patches will come, I am sure, for first and third party games that will see a collection of games moved into that 4K60 but across the board, where they can play and look absolutely amazing, and I also suspect we will see many launch titles take advantage of the extra hardware. Death Stranding has already been rumoured as a cross-gen game, as I suspect The Last of Us 2 will also be. Like the first time we saw that pushed into a 1440x60 FPS release on PS4, we will possibly see a 4K60 release with enhancements beyond that on 5. The long quiet on the first party games also tells me that they have been busy on new games to show at that reveal that will be made to target the hardware and then scale back to fit PS4 and Pro. The vast memory, hard drive and CPU gap will enable features or effects that are not present on the older versions, such as ray tracing hybrids, instant loading, 3D audio and even integrated VR support. 
Just think about that for a moment. That would be a game changer. Just what the third party devs will deliver on this will also be an exciting event and will make for enthralled views, I am sure, across the interwebs. Now, does that mean that remasters are dead then? If this is going to be the case, why would you need them? Well, me personally, no. I think we can see the evidence as to why these will continue and will change. Ubisoft have been releasing remasters or HD ports as they were known last gen and this gen and like I covered in my recent Assassin's Creed 3 with mixed results. Sony with the help of the Super Bluepoint have built an entirely new model around this to take a game, recreate it from source and then enhance, augment and reinvent that on newer, more powerful hardware. We saw it with the excellent Uncharted series and the Sublime Shadow of the Colossus, which was the most extravagant and laboured remaster yet. The team have spent the past few years bringing their own engine back, updating it, maxing it to work less bespoke solution overall and more of a streamlined tool to empower them to get more from the old games and push beyond the expected. They had a great talk at GDC 19 where they covered this and just what the next reimagining of a classic will be and they have made a big focus on this so I suspect this will be a great title on the PS4 sorry PS5 that will be one of Sony's past releases that could really show off just what a remaster is that goes above and beyond simple resolution and frame rate boosts remasters are dead long live the remasters game streaming will also play a key role here and I think will help bridge the gap from PS4 and Pro if they want a superior experience in some ways anyway over the retail versions of the PS5 now time is early on how the plans fit into the PS5's launch and my thoughts are that it will include the older hardware as it serves far more purpose for them than it does for the PS5. But they could use this as a long term BC solution for other platforms including this one also. It will not be as straightforward as many expect, I am sure, but be under no illusion though that Sony have been delivering a great streaming solution far longer than pretty much everyone else, and this will be the perfect time for them to remind the audience of that, just how good it can be, and how it can continue the lifespan of your current hardware in your house. The best bet of business is always cover every base, and that's what I believe we will see with game streaming here. Now I think the final is the cost, and that £399 price of PS4 in my opinion is not within reach. My suspicion is it will fall into the 449 or 499 mark as the spec, inflation and time have all moved on from before. I think this is still cheap enough to be within the realms of the market it will go for. Remember, the PS4 and the Pro will still exist and games will still run so you have a cheaper entry level if needed. The premium solution now being a true gap from the crowd it currently occupies. It's up to Microsoft now to have the next move in this console and cloud based gaming revolution at E3 which may yet shed even more light on just what the target specs will be and what both teams settle on. Hopefully this short and completely unscripted look at these new console information that just leaked out from the PS5 is enjoyable for you. If you did, please like, subscribe and share where appropriate. And of course, leave all your thoughts and feedback below on what you think is expected. Is it good? Is it bad? Are you moving on? Is this going to challenge the PC space? Is the X now dead in the water? All these and more that no one really cares about, if you think about it. Anyway, I'm out. Take care. Bye-bye.